Happy fall, y'all, and welcome back to my channel, Conservation Caitlin. I'm so excited to be sharing this video with you today. It's going to be the first in my holiday series. You know, fall has officially started. October 1st has come and gone, which means Halloween is just around the corner. And Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. Always has been since I was a kid. My dad is really big into Halloween, and I think I just got bit by the Halloween bug. So I'm really, really excited to be talking to you about this and how we can make Halloween a bit more of a sustainable holiday than it currently is. I've got a couple different things I want to talk to you about today. The first is Halloween decor. The second is costumes. And the third is candy and food that you can be making for Halloween parties. So I know Halloween is going to be looking a little bit different for all of us this year, but hopefully you guys can still have a little bit of fun with this holiday. So first up, let's talk about Halloween decor. You do not have to go out and buy all of this super adorable, cute fall stuff every year. I highly recommend using and reusing what you already have, buying secondhand, or you know, getting stuff from friends and family members, neighbors that might be getting rid of old stuff. That's a great way to kind of just cut down on the new creation of items and all of the resources that goes to make those new items. I've also seen some really cute stuff floating around the internet lately, so I thought I would share them here. The first is Tide Pod Pumpkins. I guess if you purchase Tide Pods, they come in a big orange plastic container, and someone got really creative and put a little black jack-o'-lantern face on it and then put a little candle or tea light inside to make a pumpkin. So I thought that was a really cute way to reuse, um, you know, a plastic item that you might already have in your home. Instead of getting rid of it right away, you can give it another life first. The second is wine cork pumpkins. I thought they were super cute. And I loved like all of the little bit of variations in the wine cork colors. And then you just need to add like a leaf or something else to add the little twig to make the pumpkin. Another is toilet paper pumpkins. This is something I just recently saw. You can take like a flannel bandana or any sort of flannel sort of fabric. I mean, you could do any pattern and any small square of fabric, you just kind of tuck it into the toilet paper roll. And then just again, add something for like a twig or a leaf or a bow, um, just to kind of turn it into a pumpkin. Another idea is dryer vent pumpkins. And I don't know how many of us have spare dryer vent tubing lying around, but I thought this was really cute. You just kind of wrap the dryer vent around together, you know, probably hot glue it or tape it. In the video, they spray painted some of them orange and left some um, that silver metal color. And then again, adding some sort of decoration on top to kind of make it look more like a pumpkin. Another super easy decor item that you can make without having to actually purchase stuff is using glass vases, glass bowls, mason jars, anything you can see through, and putting in acorns, pine cones, cranberries, and water. If you find some really pretty leaves that have fallen um, around your neighborhood, you know, just kind of gather those up and you can scatter them on tables or in bowls. It's just a great way to kind of bring nature indoors and it's a great cheap free fall decor. So those are just a couple of quick ways that you can kind of be more sustainable and create fall home decor without having to purchase anything. Um, you can just kind of use what you already have or just hop outside and see what's going on outside around you and just bring that indoors for the season. Now, the question that's probably on everybody's mind, what about real pumpkins, Caitlin? I want to have pumpkins in my house. You know, everybody loves pumpkins. I am a sucker for a good pumpkin. I think I've carved a pumpkin pretty much every year of my life. But I recently learned just how wasteful pumpkins can be. Those carving pumpkins produce 1.3 billion pounds of waste every year just in America alone. So we're creating a lot of extra kind of unnecessary waste um, just to create that item that you're going to have for maybe a couple days because they do start to rot pretty quickly after you carve them. Um, now, if you want to just go get a big pumpkin and just kind of leave it outside on your porch, you know, that's really great. They'll last a lot longer that way. And then if you want to carve it um, a couple days before Halloween, that's typically what I've been doing the last couple years. Buy it early so I can kind of just enjoy it as decor, then carve it light it up for Halloween. Just being sure if you do purchase those pumpkins and carve them into jack-o'-lanterns, make sure you are composting everything that you're not using. When you scrape out the insides, um, separate the seeds. You can roast them. You can do like a cinnamon sugar or just plain salt with like olive oil. And then all of the insides you can just kind of compost. And then obviously when you're done with your pumpkin, compost it as well. Don't chuck it into um, your trash bin. 
I also recently learned that people, I guess, bleach their pumpkins, maybe to prevent them from rotting as quickly. I had never heard of this, but I would definitely discourage you from bleaching your pumpkins if that's something you typically do because they are left outdoors and wildlife do tend to get into them and we do not want to be killing any wildlife with our Halloween decor. We're basically putting a treat outside for them so we don't want to lure them over to the treat and then have them get sick or even die from that. What you can do if you are wanting to preserve your pumpkin a little bit is use a vinegar water mixture. Do one part vinegar to 10 parts water and you can just coat your pumpkin in that, and that is not going to make wildlife sick. Another option, if you're wanting to do pumpkins still, but maybe not carve them, you can do sugar pumpkins. So they're those a lot smaller, really cute pumpkins, um, and those pumpkins are great for baking. You can save the sugar pumpkin, leave it out as long as you're wanting, and then as Thanksgiving's rolling around, carve that pumpkin up and make a pumpkin pie. All right, moving on to costumes. I loved trick-or-treating as a kid. I think if it was socially acceptable, I would probably still do it. But let's talk about the costumes that a lot of kids dress up in for trick-or-treating. They are very cheaply made. They're not made in good conditions for the workers. Usually they're in foreign countries and they're being shipped over to America. Those workers are not getting a living wage. The conditions in those warehouses are probably not the best. Um, and then they're also charging you an arm and a leg for those costumes. I cannot believe how expensive costumes are. Here are some tips and ideas for making your own costumes. Shop your closets, um, whether it's moms, dads, brothers, sisters, dig through everyone's stuff, see what you can use to get creative. If you have old t-shirts or old socks or anything that you're not using anymore, feel free to cut them up. Also shopping secondhand for items that you might need. Last year, I went as Men in Black with one of my coworkers, um, even in my own office. I told you, if I could dress up as an adult, I will, um, if it is socially acceptable. The only thing I was needing was a white button-up t-shirt. Now, I totally could have bought that secondhand. Um, unfortunately, I didn't think that through. I waited until the last minute, so I did buy that just from another store. But you can certainly get the majority of your costume probably from your house and then just supplement with secondhand items. I also know my dad used to shop um, garage sales before and after the holiday because people are going to get rid of costumes that their kids grew out of or that they no longer wear or need. So I remember having this whole bin as a kid that I could just like dig and rifle through. And that was so much fun to me because you never knew what you were going to find. It kind of changed up every year depending on what my dad found. Um, so definitely checking out garage sales, thrift stores. Um, again, checking in with your friends, your family, your neighbors. If you know they have kids that probably outgrew something and your kids are that age now, their costumes might fit. You know, if they wanted to be Captain America or Wonder Woman or something that's very specific, that would be a lot of work to make a homemade costume. You can totally just get that from a neighbor and use it. And then when your kid outgrows it, give it to someone else, pass it down. Um, there's no reason for you to go spend $50 on a costume that kids are going to wear for one night only. I also just really enjoy making my costumes. I think it encourages creativity. You get to be kind of crafty and you can come up with things that are not typically found in stores. I dressed up as Minnie Mouse one year with a group of friends as a teenager and I was still dancing. So I used my black dance tights. I used an old pair of ballet shoes dyed them yellow, so I had Minnie's yellow shoes. I wore a red and white polka dot dress that I already owned, put my hair up in some pigtails, and called it a day. Other years, I've also gone as Ginny Weasley from Harry Potter and Bellatrix Lestrange, again, using items I already owned. I stole my husband's cardigan to be Ginny Weasley, and I did buy one of those um, spray paint hair cans, probably not the best for the environment, but that was the only thing I needed to make that costume. So I saved a ton of money, I saved a ton of time, and then I did the same thing with Bellatrix Lestrange. I did need like black hairspray to turn my hair dark to look like Bellatrix, but I did everything just with items I already owned. So see, being uh, eco-friendly can save you money instead of costing you more. All right, the last thing I wanted to talk about is candy and party food. Some of my favorite things to talk about is food. I am personally a fan of candy when trick-or-treating. I know there are parents out there that prefer to give away fruit or pencils, erasers, crossword puzzles, and that's totally fine. If that's your jam, I'm not gonna harp on that. I just, as a kid, I know I really wanted candy and 
I still really enjoy giving out candy because I think that makes kids really happy. Um, and it's just a fun tradition for me. Now, obviously the majority of candy you can find in stores is wrapped in plastic, which is not the best for the environment. So I did some research on what zero wasters do are doing and there's a couple different options, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't really love any of them. One option was to make homemade goods or to buy from bulk bins and then kind of pre-package them yourselves. I have a feeling as a kid, if I had received something homemade or something that you could tell had been packaged by someone else um, from the bulk bins, it probably would have been chucked once I got home. And I would hate to encourage you guys to go out and spend the time and the money making things or buying from bulk bins and then getting some sort of packaging to put them in just to see that go straight into the trash. Like, I think that's honestly even worse than buying pre-store-bought candy that's in plastic wrappers because at least you know the kid's gonna eat the candy before they throw away the wrapper. Like I already mentioned, you can do um, non-food related. You could do crossword puzzles, pencils, erasers, practical items that you know the kids will use and enjoy. I know that does really help some kids that have food allergies. And so those are a great thing that you can do. You can also give away apples or oranges, and that's totally fine. You can certainly do that route and give out healthy food um, so the kids aren't just eating a ton of junk food. Now, for actual candy, I did see a couple of recommendations. One was finding candy that it comes in boxes. So um, there's the Thin Mints, Nerds, Dots, um, occasionally like Whoppers. So you might be able to find candy that comes in those little boxes and at least those boxes are recyclable. My big hang up with this is yes, I might feel better on the consumer end of buying it, that I know that those boxes can be recycled, but I have a feeling most families are not bringing home that candy, eating it, and then the kids are gonna go recycle that box. So it's still gonna end up in the landfill. But I mean, I guess it's better than me buying a plastic bag filled with plastic wrapped candy because I can feel better about it and it's better for the planet. So it's a little, it's a little better. Um, but like I said, I'm just not loving any of these options. I also found a recommendation to buy um, chocolate wrapped in aluminum foil packaging or aluminum wrappers, um, kind of like gelt, um, you know, like the little gold coins. So that is an option. I have not personally seen a lot of that in like local grocery stores. Maybe you can special order it off of um, a website and just get it in bulk. Um, and then that way, you know, again, the foil is recyclable, but again, I don't think the parents and the kids in these families are going to be recycling it. So I also saw a recommendation for canned beverages. So if you wanted to give away like canned lemonades or sweet teas or sodas, um, you know, something that's still kind of sweet and sugary and fun, but that way it's still packaged, the cans have a pretty good chance of being recycled. So I kind of like that idea. They are bigger, they are heavier, they're much more expensive, I think, probably when you, depending on how many kids you have coming to your door, but you know, maybe buy something that you like too. So if you don't have as many kids come to your door as you think, you've still got something that you can actually enjoy. Now for the adults, if you're looking for a sweet treat for Halloween, there is a brand called Alter Eco. They create chocolate bars and chocolate truffles. They're a little on the expensive side, but their wrappers are compostable. For actual trick-or-treating, if your kids are trying to figure out what to carry all their candy in, Earth Hero has some really cute reusable bags that are Halloween themed. I recommend checking them out. You can also use a pillowcase or any other reusable grocery bag that you have at the house. Don't feel like you need to go buy one of those cheap little plastic jack-o'-lanterns because the kids will probably only want to use those for a couple years. They don't hold a lot of candy. And then guess who's going to end up carrying the candy? you. Now this year, I don't know how many parties everyone's going to be having, um, but I think for adults that are in the workplace, you know, sometimes you have to provide some sort of tray or baked good for a holiday party. And I thought I would throw out some suggestions for Halloween themed um, foods that you can make and bring. The first are little ghost bananas. So you just peel bananas, cut them in half, and then you can add little chocolate chips um, for eyes. I thought that was really cute. I saw some also dip them in like white chocolate or yogurt so they could be more white. Um, but I thought that was a really cute idea. I've also seen people using um, those little clementine cuties and using Sharpie, they draw little jack-o'-lantern faces on the actual 
cutie. I also have seen people peel the cuties and just stick something in the cutie to make it look more like a pumpkin because once it's peeled you can see each of the little sections and it looks more pumpkin like. You can also do candy apples so if you want to just do like a caramel apple um, that's a great easy way to do it. You just stick it on a popsicle stick or a skewer and you can make the apples at home and then um, bring those to your office. I also saw some really cute vegan Rice Krispie treats. So I believe the actual Rice Krispie cereal is vegan and then you would just need to get a vegan marshmallow base or make your own. Um, but you can put Rice Krispies into any shape. So I've seen, you know, Frankenstein and ghosts and bats and all sorts of cute, creative Rice Krispie treat Halloween shapes. I also saw the chocolate pudding dirt cups with gummy worms. So you could make like a vegan chocolate pudding and then use Oreo crumbs. Oreos are vegan, so you can kind of crumble up and crush all of the, the crackers and then sprinkle it on top to make it look like dirt. And then if you can find gummy worms that are vegan, you can um, throw those in, but even just the dirt itself is pretty cute. Now, if you're looking for something more savory, I did find stuffed bell peppers. And what they did is they used orange bell peppers and kind of cut out the faces on the, the pepper and make it look like a jack-o'-lantern and put the lid on top. All right, guys. Well, those were my tips for a more sustainable Halloween. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like or comment below. Um, let me know what you liked, what you might try out, or any other tips or suggestions you have for having a more sustainable Halloween. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can be notified every time I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.